So today we're making a uh, quiche Lorraine, which is a traditional Irish recipe. It's a savoury dish that uses short crust pastry. So we're going to make our own short crust pastry now. You can buy ready-made roll-out shop-bought pastry, um, but short crust pastry is pretty easy to make. So to start with, I have a metal bowl here, which I've had in the fridge to keep it cold. So for short crust pastry, everything has to be cold. So first of all, I'm doubling my ingredients, my recipe for short crust pastry. I always find if I'm going to make it, I'm going to make a big batch instead of just making small. Um, and I tend to use a bigger... Um, dish so I'm using this size dish here and um, so this is for the shortcut pastry uh, we'll grease it and line it uh, before we put our pastry in so for the shortcut pastry we're going to start with I have here in my Wayne scales I have 200 grams of self-raising flour so I'm going to put that in we're going to add in a pinch of salt and then we need 100 grams of butter um, and then we're going to mix that in together. So I have my 100 grams of butter weighed out here, so I'm just going to add it in to the flour. Like that. Um, and then you're just going to knead the flour, salt and the butter in together. So you're going to rub it in. So get your hands right in there and rub it in as quick as you can, because we don't want to get them too warm. Mix it in. So you're just rubbing it in nearly like you're making breadcrumbs. So you will end up with it looking nearly like breadcrumbs. So just mix it in there. So you'll see it sticks to your hand. But just keep going. Um, and you'll get that breadcrumb consistency. But we don't want to rub it in too much. It'll start to stick together. Okay, so that's a good consistency. We don't want to rub it in too much or it'll get too warm. So now we're just going to add a little bit of water into it. So just rub all the butter. A lot of it will stick to your hands. Don't, be, don't waste it. Rub it into the mixture. And then we're going to add a bit of water. So we're going to add in a little bit of water in the middle. And you'll notice it coming together. So it gets a bit sticky, but just keep doing it till you feel it coming together. You'll notice there it's starting to come together now. So that looks pretty good. I don't think I need more water. But if you want to add it in a bit slower than I did till you get confident with it, just take your time, add a tiny bit of time, but you'll see how, you'll know it, it comes together fairly easy. Okay, so, I'm gonna take it out of the dish, tidy that away. Flour, just gonna sprinkle a bit of flour on the worktop. And we're gonna knead out our pastry so we start by pushing the pastry into the center like this so you're folding the pastry into the center all the time okay so you get it as smooth as possible and free from any cracks okay so then you'll notice when it's a nice consistency, then you're just going to turn it over and that's your pastry ready to go. Okay, you can keep kneading for a while if you want, but I don't want to overwork it. So that's my pastry ready to go. So now I'm just going to cover it with cling film and pop it in the fridge while I do the filling of the quiche Lorraine. For the filling of the quiche, we have started with one onion in a frying pan, two shallots, you can bulk it up if you want, but I don't want too many onions. And now I'm going to add some butternut squash, which I have diced and I roast it in the oven first. I'm going to add in some butternut squash. Traditional Irish quiche would have um, 
rashers, cheese, mushrooms, tomatoes, um, milk and eggs. That would be the basic recipe, but I'm just gonna use something a bit different today. But the good thing about quiche is once you have your pastry ready, you can use pretty much any filling you want. Beetroot and goat's cheese is another lovely one. Spinach and goat's cheese. Um, anything really you have in your fridge, you can put into it, which is why it's so great. So I rolled out the pastry. I've taken it out of the fridge and rolled it out. Okay, so roll it out to roughly the size of your dish. So if you place your dish over, you'll know if you have enough to just go over the edges. Um, it's going to crack, it's going to break when you're lifting it and put it in, but don't worry about that because pastry, uh, shortcrust pastry is pretty robust. You can use your fingers gently just to mould it back into place. So we're going to put it into the dish now. So you can use the rolling pin if you want, or you can just get your dish quickly and place it into it and then just mold it around the edges. Slowly, just gently lift it in and down into the side of the dish. And we don't want to waste this shortcut pastry either, so don't have too much over the edges. So you'll see there's a bit of a gap there from the bottom, so just kind of tease it into the sides there. So it's down fully and that will avoid air pockets on the bottom as well. So, okay, so that's it nicely in there. You can push it down if you think it's a bit thin anywhere. And then just kind of mold it around the sides. Okay, and then to neaten it up around the edges, you can just get a knife, okay? So I'll grab a knife. Uh, with your knife, you're just gently gonna, you're basically just gonna cut the sides, spin it in your hand as you're doing it, and this neatens all the edges for you. So that's your pie dish, your shortcut pastry quiche pie dish ready to go. So we're gonna pop that in the fridge, keep it nice and cool while the filling's still cooking. Here's our butternut squash, shallots and onion ready in the pan with salt and pepper on the top. Now we're just gonna transfer it into our pastry case. Okay, so this is the filling gone into the pastry case. So now I just have some mascarpone here. So I'm just gonna, don't worry if it's not full, it's gonna all spread out and melt in the oven. So now I'm just gonna um, put in a few blobs of mascarpone around this to give it a bit of flavor. So you could use feta cheese instead if you want or whatever cheese you want, but I have some mascarpone in the fridge, so um, I'm gonna use it up instead of going out and buying ingredients specifically for just one dish. I'd rather use what I have in the fridge. So that's your mascarpone gone in, okay? And then we have our milk and eggs. So the recipe called for two eggs and 125 mils of milk. I know this dish is pretty big, so I've actually changed the quantities. I changed it to um, slightly more milk I added just by sight, and I added one more egg. So um, don't put it in the mixture yet. The trick is to put the dish into the oven, and then you're gonna pour over the egg mixture, and I'll show you why. Okay, so I have put my dish on the tray. So I'm using the bottom shelf of my oven. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, my oven is on runner tracks, which I'd highly recommend for anyone, especially for a dish like this, so you can slide it in and out without having the risk of it dropping or scalding yourself. So this is the reason why you only put the liquid in now, because you're going to have to slide this back in. Now mine is on tracks, but if it wasn't, you would ideally have it in the oven and then pour your liquid over it so it doesn't spill. Um, so I can slide mine out. If you don't have it, slide it in. Normally, if you're making shortcut pastry, you would put the pastry in first, filled with parchment paper and baking beans, and bake it for 20 minutes first. And that's so you don't get a soggy bottom on your quiche Lorraine or an apple tart. Um, I'm lucky enough in my oven that I have what's called intensive bake, and that's a function where it uses the bottom element and also the fan. So I don't need to blind bake my pastry um, because I'm lucky enough to have this function. But most people don't, and if you're using a regular fan oven, 
blind bake your case first with parchment paper and baking beans for 20 minutes and then you're going to get to this step okay so for me I'm going to go straight ahead now and I have my oven set at 180 and I'm going to do it for 30 40 minutes I'll know when it's done you'll see when it's a steady consistency like a cooked egg so you just pour in your liquid all over if you want to add more you can but uh, this should be just enough so we'll rise a little bit in the oven but the reason I have tin foil under it and I have it on a baking tray is because sometimes it will spill over depending on the size of the dish you're using this one's fairly okay um, so that's it so it's in the oven now for 30 to 40 minutes okay so after 35 minutes I gave this the recipe said 30 to 40 minutes so this is our quiche Lorraine ready so it's nice and brown around the outside and it's nice and set in the middle so you'll know by the consistency and um, when you move it it won't wobble um, and then that's your quiche so I hope you enjoy this recipe this is a great recipe to have now when it's nice and warm but also when it's cold it's great to bring to work for lunch or whatever just to serve with a salad and um, it'll last for the whole week in the fridge and like I said you can use any ingredients that you happen to have in your fridge okay I hope you enjoy the recipe